Welcome to another edition of Evenings on the Patio. I'm Shanna Coons. I'm Elizabeth Robbins. And this is Elizabeth's Patio. Last time we came to you from the Uintas. Yeah, from, Robbins Roost. And it, we must admit, it was a little quieter <laughs> where we were at. And we, live, we both live in the city. I live right over there. And she lives right here. And we have a main street about a half a block away. So you might hear a little bit of noise. It but drives me insane. We have a we have a mic, so hopefully you pick us up louder than yeah. the noise. I'll just I'll kind of hold it a little okay. bit. And not a lot is blooming right now. Uh, I can't wait to do evenings on the patio next year at the end of May when everything is just blooming gorgeously. But we're at the end of the season, and that windstorm did a number on my flowers. Oh, it did a wind! <laughs> it did a number on everything. Yeah, and we were without power for four days. Yeah, that was crazy. So it was crazy. We had a little hard time. Well, actually, we could not at all do any of our blogs or filming or anything because well, we didn't have any. Yeah, and thank goodness we had gotten everything uploaded right before that storm hit, yeah. or you would not have gotten your lessons, September lessons on time. But. Yeah, yeah, no kidding. <laughs> so anyway, what well, I would like to talk to everybody about tonight, because it's really, really important to me, and I know it is really important to you, is finding your own authentic voice. I know that early on, it's probably something that you don't concentrate on quite as much until you've been painting, got a little technique under your belt and feel a little, little better about just using your medium. But pretty early on, it becomes very important. Um, both of Liz and I, that is probably the thing that brought us that we had so much in common that we became instant friends, art friends over, is we just both started talking about how important um, being authentic to who you are and creating something that when somebody walks by your painting, they go, hey, that's that's a Shanna painting or that's a Liz painting. Yeah, and I think that's, I think that's one of our strongest um, suits that both you and I have is that our work has become extremely recognizable, especially yours. I mean, you can tell a Shanna Coons painting from across the from across the room, and and that's what sets you apart is having that that such an authentic voice. Well, that has been really important to me, maybe even more so than my technical skill. Um, knowing that for good or for bad whether it's whether the paintings are good or maybe they're not so good they at least are mine they and it's my style i of course have studied and had many mentors but my paintings i think reflect me how do you think your paintings reflect you tell tell them how you came upon your authentic style Right now I'm listening to whatever bird is up there. Can you <laughs> hear those birds? They're, they're just <laughs> squawking at us. I know. I just I just pulled up the last of the sunflowers be, um, and kind of hauled them away. And I say that because poor Ruby, well, not poor Ruby. No, the poor happy birds, Ruby. Happy Ruby, the poor birds. Um, it's like every morning I come out and find another dead bird. So I decided to pull up all the sunflowers so the poor little finches and all the other pretty little birds don't get killed by Ruby. So that's them screaming <laughs> that's at you. That is them very angry the, at her. Where, where are, are my the flowers? flowers? <laughs> the seeds. That's them yelling at us. What was the question? So how do you how do you think your authentic voice started um, presenting itself? Gosh, you know, I can remember. Um, well, I studied with a lot of artists, and um, this was back when. You know, I lived in Kansas and before before my husband died, but I can remember telling him I would, I went to this workshop and this teacher said to do this. And then this teacher says, don't ever do that. And, you know, and so, you, you know, you're getting all these conflicting messages from different teachers um, that you're studying with. And I remember him saying to me one time, Liz, you just need to do what you do right now. You're you're inviting too many cooks into the kitchen. That's a good. That's a great analogy. <laughs> yeah, Jim was great at that. Um, but he said, "You just need to do you. Just do what you do." And um, I took that to heart. And at, from that moment on, 
Um, I wasn't trying so much to copy somebody's style. I know I went through a David LaFell period. I went through a Richard Schmid period, you know, because I really admired their work. And um, But then I just started being me, I guess. Um, I don't know if that answers the question. Um, I see in your paintings, and they're, they're, they are always changing, but I see an old world feel about your work. There's something that it's not old world, timeless. There's a timelessness. And, and you do love representation. I see you moving more and more towards abstract. Yeah, that's your fault. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny that you say that of being the classical and timeless because I grew again, my mother being a professional singer, um, we were very much influenced by by classical music and um, introduced to just just the classics in in books and making sure a table was set properly in china and the you know the fine things so that kind of i don't know if that has any influence but that you know i do think that probably plays some bit. it has to and for me my family was more like I mean, we moved every year and a half of my life. We were fly yeah. by the seat of our pants, very informal, um, very much into more modern music. Isn't that funny? Isn't that and and it? You can't help but become authentic if you listen. If you are really trying to paint what you love, mm -hmm. not not emulate someone else, but really paint what you love to do. Um, I think that my style lends itself a little more contemporary. It's still representational, but yeah, a little more contemporary. Yeah, for sure. Um, and definitely my passion for watercolor the first 12 years has had such an influence on my oil paintings um, in that little more contemporary, um, loose kind of feel to it. So how do you find your voice? Well, I have kind of put together a little um, thing that I give to all of my students when, when I, I first am um, picking their brain and finding out why, why, are you, why are you doing what you're do, doing? How does that influence your voice? So the, the one thing I would really like to see all of you do is have a notebook just like this. Um, I'd like to see you do writing and it has helped me. It's been so beneficial for finding myself is being able to write about myself. Um, what we're trying to do as we're finding our authentic voice is peel away the layers of the onion. Um, find out what what really thrills you, not maybe just the way the light hits an object. Those are kind of things that all of us of artists um, start exploring as we're learning about light and we're learning about form and making something atmospheric or three-dimensional. But going even deeper than that, what was your childhood like? What are you passionate about? What draws you to your favorite genre? Um, do you love still life the most? Do you love landscape the most? Or maybe you love them both and you just really like to play with paint. You like the process of moving paint around and... Yeah, or if you, you know, you like brighter colors versus grayer colors, the palettes. Absolutely, that's yeah. really important. What are you drawn to? What, yeah. what masters are you drawn to? What style are you drawn to? Um, how do you define emotion to your subject? I, my, you know, I went to school and studied figure work for three years and up at Utah State and really thought that that was what being an artist meant was being a figurative painter. And I got out of school, yes, without taking the math. And, uh, <laughs> That's another thing of my per personality, <laughs> a little spontaneous. Anyway, um, I grew up camping my whole life. I started painting landscape and absolutely fell head over heels in love with it. 
So that landscape was the first determining factor of finding my style. Second one is I am very sentimental, as are you. I think that is a commonality that we both have. We're both You're very- probably more so than I am, I think. There's, there is a, a, a passion and a sentiment to our subject matter that started defining our artistic voices right away. Yeah. And then you do start asking, what do I like bright colors? Um, do I like really muted soft grade colors? And everyone is different. In fact, I've heard it said, I read, I actually read a, a psychology article that said that your color sensitivity is directly related to your nervous system. So ultra, ultra sensitive people might not be able to handle just pure red. They might be more inclined to a gray. Well, and also doesn't each person um, are able to see different number of colors oh, yeah. the, 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 depending on their rods and cones. And there's some people that have, I don't know, I can't remember exactly what it is, but there's some people that have, it's a term. What is it called? They have more rods and cones than the average person. They can see more colors. I can't remember what the term is, but um, everybody, I think everybody does see color differently. I, I think so too. Mm -hmm. um, and some people prefer more contrast mm -hmm. than other people. Um, I like subtleties and I've been accused before of being so subtle that other people can't even see the difference. Right, and I've been <laughs> accused of being so dramatic that uh, it's a little <laughs> overwhelming. So maybe we could find a happy medium between the two of us. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Because even our personalities have I'm a little understated about some things. Well, not always, but some things. And you are more vocal. You, you are more passionate, and it shows in in our in your work. Mm -hmm. I think that there's no better compliment for an artist than for someone's work to really show who they are as a human being, too, yeah. as a person. Yeah. That well, that and that's there are. Uh, one artist once said there's a lot of paintings out there but there's not a lot of great art and I think that the the difference between paintings and art is when you know that that part of your soul comes through into your into your paintings and Absolutely. you can feel that that energy of what you put in or what you felt that moment that's and it doesn't even have to be a great technically wonderful painting um you know, in fact, I think some of the more passionate paintings out there that just bring you to your knees are ones that aren't technically perfect. You know? Oh, look at Van Gogh. Yeah. Oh, and nobody gosh. there. Nobody's respected more than Van Gogh because he absolutely painted himself. Yeah. But nobody respected him at, during his lifetime. But yeah, he was authentic to who he was, that poor guy. And when I. Um, I was in uh, Boston, or not Boston, New York. No, Jimmy, where was I? Yeah, you were at the Met. I was at the Met. <laughs> and seeing those Van Goghs in person just made me weep. Uh, it, entirely different, isn't it? Oh my gosh, they were amazing. You almost can feel him oh. like standing over your shoulder when you're looking at his work. Yeah. Did you see the brown shoes? Yes. Oh, yes. I've never seen brown shoes so beautiful in my crazy. life. Crazy, just They're, crazy. It's crazy. But it's that energy. I mean, nobody would sit there and say that that painting was technically perfect. No. But the emotion that went into that, his emotion and his energy and his authentic voice just made that painting um, museum quality, you know, and, and we it, get to enjoy it. It's almost something that you you cannot force. It right. has to happen organically. Yeah. Your, your voice starts coming out with practice, how many paintings do you think you've done? Oh, I'm, I wouldn't Good even, Lord. I wouldn't even hazard to guess. I don't it's got to be over 5,000. Pro well, probably. There's probably about a thousand in there that yeah. aren't, won't see the light of day. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, and that's not counting how many we paint over. Yeah. Sand down. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I think, um, from my own perspective, of when my voice came out was, uh, besides what Jim said, was that 
there was a moment in time where I was painting on the left side of my brain and just trying to, you know, copy somebody's painting or I was trying to match that color perfectly or trying to paint exactly like the photograph or exactly what was there. Instead, the moment I let go and let my my energy and my heart take over, um, I, that is when I think I found my voice yeah. and not trying to copy other paintings. I mean, it's copying is a great way to learn for sure. I mean, we just, you know, we're even going to do, we have a, a whole lesson, a whole month planned on master copies. Um, but concepts, conce the concepts, the concepts from of, them. Uh, right. But taking what you learn and incorporating that into your own, the own style, um, I think that's, but anyway, I think that was a big shift for me is when I really did start painting from my heart and not from my head. Yeah. I think that I am a basically a very impatient person. And so you are, I am, I, I don't more have, impatient than me. I don't have the patience to copy something. Um, maybe I don't have the patience. Maybe I don't have the ability. I'm not very good at copying much of anything. That's um, probably wh why you are so authentic. <laughs> it's, it's called stubborn, very, very stubborn that, um, and I do think that the, paintings that stand the test of time are ones that you can pinpoint exactly who that painting is yeah is has been done by yeah maybe even the period of time the century you can almost see the period of time that it's in um i, I am a proponent of painting paintings nowadays we've had the peasant girl talk before. oh the, the peasant girl <laughs> yeah uh, um painting things from the 1800s or maybe even the early 1900s that obviously are historical or not exactly my favorite and that's that's probably because neither you nor I would have done good um, during that time period as women probably not <laughs> but it, we do things are a little easier for us a little now easier for us Right. And then, yeah, I would have, I would have probably been burned at the stake or something. <laughs> <laughs> but. And too much, too bold women. <laughs> um, oh, okay, let's think of some other ways because it isn't something that you can force. But if you write about yourself and really get to the heart of who you are and why you do what you do, it sure helps. And maybe you start by saying what you don't like yeah and you know i think it just dawned on me another time that i felt like my my authentic voice came out was when um i did a bunch of studies you know time, the time when i was studying with um, tom browning really quick little studies that you didn't have time to to copy something you were given 10 minutes to do a quick study and in those quick studies you will find your voice comes out automatically because you don't have time yeah. to think about anything else. Speaking of Ruby, there she goes. Um, but, you know, don't you agree? I agree. And I also think it's about following your joy. Yeah. Whatever that thing is that just absolutely makes your heart pitter pat when you're doing it. Oh, look at, I, I did a little tiny uh, portrait of Yoshi, my granddaughter Yoshi a couple after, of days ago after i did my little portrait of georgia and she i said you need to do yoshi i scared to death I, I i studied figure for three years and i'll tell you i still every time i go to do the figure it just scares me to death you did such a good job had, on it i had so much fun because it was so emotional yeah but my my landscapes are very emotional what do i paint a lot of waters that my dad would be fishing in the mountains that we would camp in um big cottonwood trees along the river i thought it was funny in the sentient academy workshop that you just did the people that were from back east or i can't remember where they were from but you were painting cottonwoods and they didn't even know what a cottonwood looked like what in I, fact half of them said what's, what's, a, cotton what's a cottonwood <laughs> Uh, that's, it's a very Western tree. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And uh, that's another thing that leads right into the next thing. Paint what you know. Yeah. Paint what you know the most. Um, 
paint what you adore the most. Yeah, and of course, obvious for me, it's flowers, and with you, it's trees. It's kind of therapy for both of us. It's I think kind of so. therapy. Yeah. Let's see what else. What else have I got down here? Um, I, another thing. How much time do you paint? How much time do you put into it? Do you take your own photos or paint from life? That's really important. Photography is great. In fact, this month's lesson is about how to take a photograph and manipulate and compose and crop and move and change things around and work into a series in order um, to develop more experience. But there's also nothing like painting from life to get attached to that mm -hmm. subject matter. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's going to a place that is that I've gone to a million times that I've spent so much time at that I know it so well and then painting it in more of an interpretive style. Yeah, and I know when I paint from life from the flowers, the memory of that day um, is much more long lived than if I, you know, set up a setup and I photograph it to paint later and then I paint it later from a photograph. I know that moment in time where I'm painting from life has such a, a stronger memory and maybe it's, you know, I can smell the roses or, you know, there's a little bug that crawls by that <laughs> freaks me out or something, but there is that stronger memory, that stronger connection that, that as opposed to painting from photograph. And I, like I say, I, you know, all winter long I paint from photographs because flowers aren't blooming. Have you ever painted from memory? Um, well, when I did wall murals, I did a lot of that kind of stuff but not not on my canvas. Yeah, I'm not I'm not really big on painting just from memory either, but once in a while if I jot a little note notes down or kind of come up with a plan, I might it makes it a little easier to paint from memory, but if you want representational, I think I think you can yeah. you got to see it. Yeah. I know there's a, I don't know who it is, but somebody took a workshop and um, said that they the teacher had them you know, look for five minutes at the scene and then turn around and, and paint from memory, you know, for about 10 minutes. And then they could turn and look for 30 seconds and then they had to turn around and paint for 10 minutes. So they, they were just painting from memory. That'd be a fun Wouldn't thing that, to do. Yeah, we that would be do fun. That we should do that. Yeah. That we'll do fun. a one hour challenge doing that. Okay. We haven't done a one hour challenge in a long time. We've been too busy filming and editing. We have been. <laughs> and we're having a ball. Six months, guys. We're into this six months. We're, we're, in fact, we're going into our seventh right, month. Right, and we've, we, yeah, I'm excited about um, October because what's funny is that we kind of did, you did this really moody, cool uh, landscape, cool palette, and I did this really moody, warm, warm. still life, so. Yeah, we flipped. We definitely have a strong influence on each other when we're painting, thank heavens. We're, if you can find painting friends, there, there's nothing better especially somebody that is about at the same, same level. level. You can run ideas through, you can have these kind of conversations. Mm -hmm. What is important to you? What isn't important to you? Mm -hmm. um, then you can have um, complaining sessions. Yeah, we have those too. And <laughs> you, you gotta, you have to have those. Let's see, notes, experiment with composition to see what feels right to you. That's definitely yeah that's a big deal what feels right when you're putting a composition together uh, that that is something that i think we we both have um pretty intuitive we, composition we do and, I, and, and i've said this before when in classes or teaching and stuff is that sometimes i think that the composition is um, more recognizable as who, who that painter is as anything else yeah. I have a very definite compositional style and, and you do too. So from across the room, you can look at, you know, a composition and say, oh, I know who that painter is without even seeing it up close. Yeah, without even looking at the brushwork or anything. Yeah. That, that though, too, does become part of your style. When I went, when I was at the Booth Museum last April and Tim Lawson's show was hanging, you look at the surface quality of his painting and beside, besides the subtleties, that surface quality is so rec recognizable. Yeah. So, so is like Twatman and Monet and George Ennis is very recognizable too, in that it, it's thinner um, than you expect it to be, a lot of thick and thin. Mm. 
any still life artists that you can think of that has re recognizable? Well, I mean, Henry Fantin Latour, I mean, he's completely recognizable. Um, I, I think one is his compositions and because um, he did so many just, you know, roses in a vase kind of thing and, and his background, the way he painted his backgrounds were, he actually painted the backgrounds first and let that dry and then he painted on top of that. Um, but I think he's very recognizable. Yeah. I think so too. We had we did do a art history um, clip on him, so you'll have to check that out. Mm -hmm. Th this month I'm going to do Twatman, and he has got a very recognizable um, sur surface quality to his and work I didn't, as well. You know, and I before I met you, I didn't even know who Twatman was. Really? So, yeah. It, that, that's not a, another thing about having a paint friend is yeah. we all. We all come to this from an entirely different viewpoint. Mm -hmm. We all come to art, except for that it's, it's really kind of funny that you and I both started from um, toll painting. <laughs> De decorative painting. <laughs> well, for me, it was toll painting. For you, you took it a little more uh, to, to the a little to further. different level. Yeah, I just didn't do well. Wall murals. Trying to stay in, the, we in both, between the lines. We both did wall murals. And yeah. Uh, and portraits and, portraits, and yeah. it it takes many years many years but I do remember applying for shows early on and I would do this thing where I'd put the painting against a wall and I'd walk away and turn around and look at it with a fresh eye and look at next to other people's and go what is wrong with me my paintings look so different than everybody else's this is not good Funny thing is, is it ended up turning out to be the thing the that best, was good. That, yeah, definitely. But you, I mean, you yourself are a very authentic person. Um, yeah. There's not too many Shannas in the world. <laughs> Thank God for that. <laughs> and I am blessed to live right next door to one of them. <laughs> no, or tortured. <laughs> oh, there, you have your moments, as do I. <laughs> I. I think philosophy and spirituality also lend themselves to your authentic voice as well or whether you are a, a rebel rouser or somebody who goes with the flow i think that that has a lot to do with how you paint a lot of times i get really um, insecure the fact that i'm not exactly the most eventful person in the world. I'm afraid I might be just a little boring and that that might come across in my paintings, that my paintings might be a little boring, a little not quite as exciting, um, but that's also my personality. You do suffer from insecurity. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I just want to say, stop that. Your paintings are amazing. They're so emotional. Um, but there is not one big thing that always jumps right out at my paintings. The, it, it's the painting as a whole, instead of necessarily particular elements. Well, not everybody needs to have big, flashy, bold, bright colors hanging all over their house. You know, you do need, you need, um, just like in music, there's loud areas, crescendos, and then there's, there's quiet areas. and. You know, that's what you're painting. It gives it gives the viewer a chance just to kind of take a breath and relax and soak it all in quietly. And and it's a be it's a beautiful experience. If you if you haven't seen one of Shanna's paintings in person, they're totally different experience <laughs> in person versus just on the computer. As, as are yours. As are yours. Your your surface, your backgrounds are amazing. They're incredible. Oh, you're sweet. And so. it's really fun to watch. Your, the abstract qualities starting to starting evolve to. in your work but now i just lost my I, there's another little off. kitty do you see her that's that's the little kitten oh that's the kitty there's a little kitten back I there i got cats everywhere now it's cute i didn't used to have cats when i had dogs now i have cats i'm going to become known as the cat lady when all is said and done there was something i was going to say now i can't remember. oh and that I, and one thing i'd like to say if you, well, I mean, uh, it's really important to us as teachers that we teach you concepts, right. not to paint what, like us. See, we're of one mind because that's yes. exactly what I was going to say. Okay. 
if somebody's been studying with someone for a very long period of time that's a really, really strong teacher, you can see it. Any, anybody who's been painting very long can see it. Mm -hmm. they, can, they can tell, oh, this is who you're emulating. And that's not always a good thing. I, I, I don't think it is. There's, yeah. There are a lot of artists out there um, that are probably better painters than me, but they're, they're better than me. Stop. Their, but, their painting style is so identical to somebody else that it's just like, oh, that's another, you know, whatever. We yeah, can, we want to see you. Insert the name and say Ling. <laughs> yeah, we, we want to see you. We yeah. want to see your voice thrive. We yeah. want to see you come to life and express the things that you're passionate about. Right, it isn't about trying to get you to paint just like us. It is about just teaching you good principles of art and you take that and you you infuse it into your style and your voice and that's what we wanna see. It's a good thing sometimes to put together a body of your work too. Russell Case told me this one time so many years ago, so many years ago. Get in the middle of a room, put your paintings all the way around the room, sit in the middle of the room and pick out the common denominator that you like about all of those paintings and start with that. That's a good idea. See what a body of work looks like or the feeling of a body of work, your palette, your everything. Yeah, I like that. So I, I think that would help for mm -hmm. sure. Mm -hmm. um, and I also believe in working in a series, which you'll find this month because working in a series really makes you explore. So I've done most of the talking here. It's your turn. Well, no, that's, I said I wanted you to do most of the talking <laughs> because I filmed all day and edited all day. So I'm somewhat brain dead. <laughs> um, when, when you send in your pieces for critique, I don't know about you, but I want to see you. I would, I would like to see the pieces that you're doing of your own style, of your own um, images, your own photography. Um, when we're working together with the video, our main video, that's great. I'm and we try and teach as much as possible. But the ones that I think I can help you the most with are the ones that are more reflective of what you are passionate about, what you love. Right, and and not not the painting from the lesson that month. Yeah, yeah. So if when you we we are wanting you to submit um, more of your original work and not the copies of ours. So, because I think you'll learn more that way. And I would also like to, we've had a few questions come up on, uh, up, um, on our forums and questions directly to us about copyright. Okay. Um, so we are absolutely thrilled to share everything that we have with, for, with you and you'll, you will definitely get that forevermore. Um, but what about what about selling? What about showing? So you know, I what I always say, you know, you can copy all day long. There's no law that says you can't copy something. What you can't do is copy a painting and then put it in a gallery for sale or make prints of it or enter it into a show. That's that goes against copyright laws. Of course, there's always the, you know, you have to change it 25% or, or whatever. But if you're basically just copying a painting um, and trying to sell it in a gallery, that's not cool. There was actually a painting that was submitted to the Oil Painters of America show a couple years ago. And um, I was looking through the images and I looked at this one and I, I recognized um, that it was a copy right away and of a very well-known artist and so i emailed opa and i said are you aware that this is a copy and um and i showed him the original and the person hadn't even changed a leaf i mean everything was identical to what the original That's bad master had done and um i said i'm kind of in shock that none of the, none of the judges were aware that this that this was a copy um so you know you can't you can't do that for sure. And there are a lot of people who are very well versed in art history and would be able to pick that up. Yeah. 
You know, if so, like for October's lesson, I'm painting this copper kettle with red onions and yellow onions and Indian corn. And if you have a copper kettle and, and you set something up that's a you know different configuration than what that's I do, wonderful. then that's fine. Then that's your painting. And, you know, I've just um, inspired you or influenced you a little bit in, in that particular concept. But there's that's fine. Um, we do we do want you to when you post paintings from the from the um, from the course on social media, we love that you do that. We just we would be really grateful if you could tag Inspire to Paint or tag me or tag Shanna in it so people know that you did that from the course there. Um, we give us some good PR. Give, too. give us some, <laughs> give us. Yeah, please tell your friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, let's see what else. Oh, and I there when we, the the lesson that I did the beautiful fall leaves. Oh my! There was so many students that did their own um, fall leaves paintings and sent them. Um, Francesca did. Deanne Donahoe did. There was quite a. I got quite a few that were absolutely beautiful. Your own photos. Your own beautiful fall colors where you took that exact same concept and put it into your own images and that's what we're looking for yeah the, i mean take whatever you can learn and apply it to the thing that you are the most passionate about yeah so again if you copy a painting um from the course if you're just following along and you're painting from the video um you it is technically correct to sign it you know so and so after coons or after robins at least on the back and again if you want to you know sell that to a family or friend yeah. we don't have any we, problem yeah, with that we don't care. no but you should not be putting it in a gallery or in a competition yeah for sale so because the world already has us they want you <laughs> they want to see what you have to say true and if it wasn't Im so important, you wouldn't be doing it. Somewhere deep down inside, you know that the world needs your voice too. And we, I have found every time, every voice has an audience. There's no such thing as this competitiveness in art, at least that's how I feel. Which there shouldn't be. There shouldn't be, because everybody has their, every voice has its own audience. You'll find your people. Yeah. And, and one other thing before we end, I want to say about the website. I know we've had we've gone through some changes in the website. We ha you know, we had some hiccups along the way and we think we've got all that taken care of and you know, we're <laughs> as a motorcycle goes by. That's the <laughs> um but you know, we are there may be a few more changes along the website. It, it's it's about, you know, getting better and better and better. We couldn't we couldn't wait for us to have everything perfect to launch this Inspired to Paint site. So or it would have never been done. It never would have been done. So every, I think every month we tweak a little bit and I think it's getting yeah. better and easier to find your lessons and, and things like that. And we hope we're growing along with you as well as you're oh, growing we are. along with us. Yes. Um, we are having fun and it, there is not a day go by that one of us doesn't have okay, let's do this, let's do this. <laughs> the next month we're gonna do this. We do love to teach and we love to share. We do. And watch you grow and use those forums, everybody. Post your work. Oh. We wanna see what you're doing. Right, you know, I there's there's the, the few that are constantly using the forums and we're so grateful that you are, but you all access past members. You're not taking advantage of the forums, the group forums um, and the critiques. We, we tend to get this, the you know, same, the same people, same people submitting, using although we got a few new people this month. Yeah, that's very exciting. But if you're all access, you get those critiques and they're so helpful. Now, we are a little limited to how much time we have in critiques. So like both, we can't do, we can't do 20 30, a 30. month <laughs> yeah. We're, each. And, and you do probably more than I have been able to do because I had some shows this summer coming up and we're doing we're doing more but we also would like to come January after the season after the holidays are all over we'd like to start introducing maybe a way of doing some one-on-one um, -on -one mentoring yeah. with with a couple of people per month per each of us yeah we that's been the plan for a couple months yeah. we just haven't been able to 
to get it off the ground yet. Well, we, so. we have a big learning curve too. <laughs> We've had quite a learning curve. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, if you have two great minds think alike, yeah. <laughs> um, if you have also suggestions or things that you think that might, we might incorporate, we, we are open to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because I, you know, my brain, the way my brain works is that this makes perfect sense to me, <laughs> but it may not make perfect sense to anybody else. But anyway, we're trying and we are women. We do change our mind. <laughs> <laughs> so as the wind blows. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, at that, cheers. Cheers. And cheers to you. And thank you for joining us. Thank you for being part of this. Um, it, it's been an incredible journey so far. How are we going to do this in the wintertime when there's snow? In your studio. It is not well, going to be on the patio. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. Yeah. All right. All right. Happy painting, everybody. Happy painting. <laughs>